Hi guys, this is Pikaten and welcome to your ninth Roblox Lua script tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, um, we won't be covering custom functions like I promised in the last tutorial because I've realised that I've missed out a very important part in Roblox scripting and that is instancing objects. It's creating um, any sort of objects like fire, messages in workspace or just parts to do anything. Um, and I'll also be going to the logic of game scripts. now. What I mean by game scripts is just stuff that basically anything that doesn't just make um change a bricks property, for example. A lot of people have been asking how you do anything except change bricks properties. Um, in in this tutorial, I'll be showing you ba the basic logic of say a round script. So one that you teleport players to an arena, it waits 300 seconds, and then it teleports everyone back and kills everyone and says the win and everything. You won't actually be able to do this, do this yet because we haven't covered all of the functions to be able to do it, but in a later tutorial I will be going into how to do it. I'm just going to show you the basic logic in this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial I will be covering custom functions which is a bit that most people find hardest. So to um, create objects in Roblox we call them instancing and now there's a special um, function that Roblox have already got for this called instant. In the instance um, you don't need to know anything about this instance table yet. It's um, instance has all the instance functions. I think there's actually only two instance functions: instance lock, which you don't, I don't even know how to use it very well. It's complicated, and you don't need to know it at all. I've never used it before. So you use instance dot new, which is how you create any sort of object in Roblox. So instance dot new, and because it's a function, you need those two brackets. Um, and the first argument, or the first parameter, is called uh, is the object you want to create. So if, um, say, how do you know what the name of any object? You go if you click on workspace up here in the insert object, you'll find every single name of the objects that you want to insert. Any, these are the exact names that you need to insert. So if you wanted to create a model, you type that with the correct capital letters and everything, just model. If you wanted to create um, a part, it would be part, just like that. So uh, for the moment I'm going to be creating a part. No, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be creating a message. So create a message. Now what do you think that will do? Well, that, that will create a message, won't it? So if we press play, running script script, but nothing's happening. Oh, I've forgotten. I've got a new um, cam recording, screen recording software, so hopefully it won't be too bad. I'm going to zoom in anyway, though. Um, so I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully you could read it. So it's not new message. That's what you're supposed to type in. But as you realised, it didn't actually create um, anything. It didn't um, uh, create a message that displays or anything. So <coughs> what you need to do is set its parent because you know when we were doing previous scripts we had to set I'm not sure I've even taught you this parent so the reason why we have to type whenever we're doing we're trying to access a brick that we can see we type workspace dot base that's because base's parent is workspace every object in Roblox has a parent unless it's like non-existence when you use remove or something which I think we've covered in the um, Roblox functions tutorial remove sets its parent to nil which means it's like still there but its parent is nil so it, nothing can access it at all so we use it instance new message and we could because this returns the message object that we've just created you don't need to know what that means yet but it basically allows us to just do dot parent afterwards we do a dot parent equals workspace but because um, this instant new function has already has a second argument built into it. Um, I'm going to custom functions next door so we'll understand all of this later. But I put a comma and then type workspace and it will automatically set messages parent to workspace. So what we can do now is press play and a message will appear in workspace. But you still can't see it here because its text is nothing. Now how do you think we can set that text? We could, of course, just do dot text equals hi so if I now press play hi will appear on the screen but if I wanted to say change its name first so 
So I have a name equals message. And then I could access it by just doing workspace dot message dot text equals pig. Now I press play, that would still work. But we could assign it to a variable or assign yeah, assign it to a variable, that's what you say. So instead of doing all this, if we wanted to change it load throughout our script, instead of doing workspace dot message every time, we could simply do M equals instance of new message workspace. So we've covered variables in our tutorial, so we should know what this does. So whenever we say M now, it will mean the message we've just created. So then afterwards we can type M dot parent equals workspace. And then let's say do M dot text equals pig at 10. And M dot, well let's wait two seconds. And M dot text equals is awesome and then I was going to save the place I want to press play I've got pick a 10 and wait two seconds and then change is awesome now this um, is you can create any object in Roblox by using this function so if you instance a new unless they've locked the object because I'm not sure they have at all it's a new part workspace um, if we use this now we can do well, let's just change this because M doesn't mean anything. P. P um, we got part dot size. You should know what this means because we covered it in our um, property tool. Like three dot new. Hundred, hundred, hundred. So that will set the piece size. To create it, and it, a massive object appears. So that's your basic introduction to creating parts on Roblox. Now. Hopefully you'll be able to understand that. You'll be able to use this in everything. Every script um, in a game will be able to or will create parts or clone parts or something. I believe I've covered clone to you before. So if, I, if you do clone, it will clone a part. I think I have in our um, tutorial. You, you'll learn what all these means in due course. But um, now I'm going to teach you, talk you through game logic. Now this will be a very quick and brief introduction but a lot of people are asking how can you create scripts that actually do something in games? Well this is how. So say we wanted to create a script which has a, has rounds so it does something and then waits 300 seconds and then says who's the winner and then does something else. So how do you get it? We want it to go on forever don't we? We want it to ever stop unless it's run out of players so we don't um, we'll type while true do. You should. We covered this on loop tutorial. This will run forever. So now, inside this loop, we'll just type it in there. I want it to go blue. Um, we can now do while true do on local variables. Ah, this will be a good time to explain local variables to you. Local variables are variables, so exactly the same as m equals 2. So m, if we said print m now, it'd say 2. But then also, if we said it outside of this while true do loop, it would still say 2. But of course the while true do loop actually just um, go on, goes on forever, so it wouldn't actually do anything yet. But if we printed m after this while true loop had finished, then it would also... Actually, I think a while loop isn't the best thing. So go if true, then m equals 2 and this will all be or true is always true obviously so if we do if we do print m here it will print 2 if we also do print m outside of the loop it will also print 2 m doesn't cease to exist as come as it comes out of the true loop it just says print it will print 2 but what local variables do if you type local afterwards that means it will only exist inside the block it's in, and the, um, it's called its scope. Its scope is only the block it's in. You can tell if it's a block by if it has this dash next to um, a line. If you can click here, that's a block, so it will minimise the block. Um, so M will only exist inside there, you can tell. So most things that you declare with blue words, this is a very untechnical term, if you declare things with blue words they usually block, so if statements, while true do's, functions, repeat statements, all of that stuff are blocked, so m will only exist inside them. So if I did print m now, we show you, press play, it will print 2 
And the next one, print nil. And nil is always nil is um, when the value doesn't exist. So if we go back to our game script, we can type while true do. Uh, afterwards, we do while true do. Let's create a message. So we don't want it to be accessed outside of the loop because um, local variables they are they de are deleted as soon as um, the block they are in ends, which means they save lag because all variables use memory. So when the variables are existing, they will cease to exist after the block has ended. So which means they'll save on some memory space, which means they'll decrease the lag. So that's the one way of delagging your script slightly is to just make variables local. Local variables won't do anything if they're not inside a block. So if you do local m equals 2 here, it won't do anything at all. Well, it will just create exactly the same as without the local. So what you do, local m equals instance.new message in workspace. Um, we want to create, let's see, m.text. Welcome to Pikachu's awesome game. We'll wait four seconds, then afterwards, m.text equals, uh, let's see, what do you want to say now? Make sure you don't lose or you're a loser. That's my message. Wait three seconds, I have to wait four seconds because I want to give them time to read it. So after that, then we'll teleport all the players. Um, there's a function called move to that you can give it a position and every, all the objects will move. So say the vector 3 dot new 10 10 10. The, the object that we'll use move to on, unless it's a humanoid, which we, don't, we won't go into yet, and the object we use move to on will go to 10 10 10. But how do you think we get all the players? We will have to loop through the players directory in Explorer, this game.players, with a uh, in pairs loop and a table, which I haven't taught you yet and I will be going into later, but not now. So for now, I'll just comment this. Um, I was about to type comment then. Teleport players. Then afterwards, uh, we will go into, say, we'll just wait five minutes. So wait 300 seconds. And then after we've waited 300 seconds, then we can say, let's kill kill all the players. So times up, um, and then we'll kill all the players. But we we'll use in pairs loop in a table again. So we don't, I won't actually show you how to do this yet. I will be going after the custom function. So we'll be going into tables because they're boring, but they really, really, really useful kill all the players and then while killing all the players you will find out the person who's won so the winner is and then display the winner but we haven't got the winner yet so remember all I'm teaching is the logic and then we'll just wait a second and it ends so then it will we'll want to remove the message first so we'll just do um, remove and there we go. That's the basic, very, very basic. It won't actually do anything yet. It'll just display a message randomly. But that's like the, the game logic. So you just put a script, most scripts are a name like main or message or game script. Um, so this is your basic game logic script. I hope this has been interesting and you've learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.